Hi there. Now, I'm often asked, what method should one use to find the value of an integral? And the answer is that you need to take a systematic approach. It's quite difficult to lay down exact results, but it's possible to stick to a set of guidelines indicating how to proceed in any case. And that's the purpose of this particular series of videos. What I want to do is take you through each step in a form of a checklist. And the first thing I would want to check is, is it a standard integral? And by that, does it contain terms of the form ax to the power n, a being a constant? This is the type where we add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. And remember, you've got your constant c of integration. Or maybe it's a trigonometric type, something of this form, sine of ax. When you integrate this, you get minus 1 over a cos ax. And the integral of cos ax is 1 over a sine ax. And the integral of sec squared ax is 1 over a tan ax. The special case is when a is 1. So we get the integral of sine x is minus cosine x. And the integral of cos x is sine x. And the integral of sec squared x is tan x. And then we have an extension of these ones, which you should also be familiar with. That is where we have the sine of ax plus b, cosine of ax plus b, and sec squared ax plus b, b being a constant, along with the a. And we just extend our results to the ones that you see here. And you should also be familiar with these results here, the integral of sec ax tan ax. That turns out to be 1 over a sec ax. And the integral of cosec ax cot ax is minus 1 over a cosec ax. And finally, the integral of cosec squared ax is equal to minus 1 over a cot ax. And again, not forgetting the constant of integration, c. And you should also be familiar with exponential and natural log types. For instance, the integral of e to the power ax is 1 over a e to the power ax. And the integral of 1 over x is equal to the natural log of the modulus of x. And the integral of a to the power x is a to the power x, all divided by the natural log of a. And again, not forgetting that constant plus c. Now these are just some of the common standard integrals that you get at this level. But I would certainly encourage you to double check in your formula book if you use one to see what integrals are given and how they're presented. Now what I want to do next is just give you an exercise, seven questions of integrals that you should recognize as standard integrals. And here they are. Now you may want to pause the video at this stage, have a go at them. When you come back, I'll immediately display the answers, but not the work solutions. And then I'm going to take you slowly through each of the uh, work solutions. But you may want to fast forward just to check out the solutions quickly. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So here are the answers to all seven integrals. Now what I'll do next then is I'll take you through each of the examples and at the end of the video we'll recap the standard integrals. So let's look now at number one. I picked this one because it involves quite a number of processes. So it's all based around using the integral of terms of the form ax to the power n. Now, what I'm going to do is let i equal that integral. It just saves me a bit of space. So the first thing I'd want to do 
is expand the brackets here on the top. And if you do that in the usual way, you should find you get 2x to the power 5 minus 4x squared plus x cubed minus 2. And then the next process would be to divide each of the terms on the top by 3x squared. And if you do that, you'll get this. And then we have each of these terms basically in this form where we add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. And if you do that, you'll get the following. And we can clean up, say, this first term here, the 2 and the 12 cancel, to 1 sixth. And the x to the power minus 1 can be written as 1 over x. So you're going to get 2 over 3x there. So when you write that down, that's your answer. So quite a lot of stages in that particular example. As I say, I tried to give you all the different types that you're likely to get there. Now with the second question, it's based around using this standard result. The integral of sine ax with respect to x is equal to minus 1 over a cosine ax. So we can see then that if we let i equal that integral, then we're going to end up with 2 fifths times minus 1 third cosine 3x plus the constant of integration. The a clearly being the 3 here. So 2 fifths times minus a third gives minus 2 fifteenths. So you're going to end up with minus 2 fifteenths cos 3x plus the constant of integration. Now for question 3, then this has this form. The cosine of ax plus b, if you were to integrate it, is equal to 1 over a sine ax plus b. So with this one, again, if we let i equal that integral, the a is the 5 and the b is the minus 2. So we're going to have 3 times the integral of cosine of 5x minus 2. And that's going to give us 3 times 1 fifth of sine 5x minus 2. So 3 times a fifth then just gives us 3 fifths sine of all of 5x minus 2. Now for number 4, the integral of 4 sec 3x tan 3x with respect to x uses this standard integral. And you can see that if we let i equal that integral, then we've got a as taking on the value 3. So you've got 4 times this result here. 4 times 1 third sec 3x, which is going to give you 4 thirds sec 3x. Now for question 5, each of the terms in 5 are going to be reduced to this standard integral result. e to the power ax is equal to 1 over a e to the ax when integrated with respect to x. And so if we let i equal that integral, then what I need to do is change this term here. I can write this as 1 third e to the power minus 2x. And if you do that, then you'll see I've written it here. So I can integrate each of these terms then using this standard integral result. And so if you do that, you should get this result here. With this one here, we've just got the 3 times the negative 2, which is going to give minus 6. And then you've got minus minus 6, which is the plus the 6 down here. OK, then I've got e to the minus 2x, which I could then send back down to the denominator. Remember, this is 1 over e to the power 2x. So 1 sixth times 1 over e to the power 2x gives us this final result here. OK, so hopefully you're able to get that. Now we move on to number 6. And in number 6, we're using this standard integral result. e to the power x when integrated with respect to x is equal to a to the power x over the natural log of a. And so if we let i equal that integral, 4 to the power x, 
then integrating that, letting a be the 4, then the answer follows immediately as 4 to the power x over the natural log of 4. And now we have number 7, and the integral of 5 over x follows this form, 5 times the integral of 1 over x, and you can see it's the natural log of x. So with this one, if we let i equal the integral of 5 over x with respect to x, the answer follows immediately as 5 times the natural log of x. And note the modulus sign there, okay? And so just to recap then, this was the original page that we started with, with these standard integrals. And that would be my first check then when I'm integrating any particular term in an integral. Is it a standard integral? Does it have one of these forms? Now in the next video, what I want to do is show you what the next check is if it's not a standard integral. So I hope you'll join me then in that video.